Okay, welcome back to a War Tales video, a very exciting video, the first major content update. Uh, up until now, the devs have been releasing just community-based content updates where it's more focused on the, the features that the community have been requesting. This content update is a big one, absolutely huge. So I'm very excited to be, uh, to be in this already. Um, I am going to put the message that's normally at the end of the video right up the front, my final opinion on how the game is sitting at the moment, and that is that the game is now going to be more or less ready for a much wider player base with this content update. Um, my recommendation is now that you, if you're sitting on the fence, do think about picking the game up, particularly while it's on sale, which is nice. Um, so just want to be up front with that, and basically I'll talk through all of the content that's been added uh, why it's such a huge change to the game and, you know, why my opinion has switched to that from where in early access I was kind of more like, look, you may want to wait for more content. This is that content. Very exciting. All right, I'm going to be looking through the patch notes today, not going to be doing some gameplay, mainly because there is just too much to talk about and show you in a single playthrough video. Um, the number of things that I want to make videos about with Harag is fairly extensive and I've got some really cool ideas planned. All right, update number one. We are going into Ludern is the region. So similar to the other places, uh, we have um, the county of Arthas and within the county of Arthas, you've got, you know, Korsh is the main town, that kind of thing. Um, Harag's marshlands are part of the kingdom of Ludern. All right, uh, it is rugged terrain and rocky from the runaround that I've had in there. The map is slightly more complicated than some of the others. So Tiltrin, where you've got the, you know, the very central city in Stromcap and not that many mountains blocking your path. It's a little bit more, um, it's a little bit more narrow in places and you've got to avoid certain obstacles moving around the map. Jumping into the world. We have some changes, obviously the new region, which I've just been talking about, um, the customs, beliefs, and mysteries. So as you talk to the people around the place, you'll learn a little bit more about the world. I love some of these little uh, montages as well, playing in the background. Level cap increasing to nine is absolutely huge. So previously the level cap was five. I know a lot of people were waiting on this level cap increase. It does mean from my point of view, if you've been playing with a party and you've finished all three existing regions, and you're at level cap, you're probably going to be very well equipped for heading into Harag's marshlands. Um, you're also not going to hit the level cap of nine just by completing a single region. So you may want to consider, um, I'm not going to say starting again, because uh, that's a that's a fairly long haul mission, uh, but you know, you just might, might not hit the level cap in one region unless you're taking an absolute bunch of fights. A new Tomb of the Ancients, uh, new points of interest, so they're just all the little places around the map. Uh, some cool ones that I found so far, uh, you know, the, the tree that you see in the background here with all the um, plagued hanging around this merchant who you need to save. Uh, Forsaken Villages look really, really cool. Now, the party that I used to run around actually had quite low willpower. You actually want a little bit of willpower on your characters for Forsaken Villages. So, you know... Um, the, the willpower video I made not so long ago may have uh, may have helped a few people get more ready for this than I thought. Uh, marshlands are infected by plague-ridden and hordes. Now, there is a giant horde that roams around, and I had a few... Uh, it kind of felt like I was in a zombie movie moment where I had just these number of groups of this horde kind of running at me. There's kind of like lots of little teams and... Yeah, they chased me. I ran up a baton and managed to escape just before combat started. So it was a great little escape. All right, enemies. So we have uh, a few new enemies listed down here from bears, mosquitoes, crocus wines. Um, and each new faction has a another unit that gets added once you reach level five. Uh, I managed to see a couple of these. They're pretty cool. Um, you know, they just change things up slightly. Uh, things like more support AI-based units. So enemy uh, spearmen who are designed to run up and heal allies rather than just be something that uh, damages your squad, which is pretty cool. Uh, enemy factions. So faction buffs are something that are super interesting and make each of the fights slightly different again from each other. My only recommendation is if you ever come up against the, uh, the I think it's the tracker faction buff, 
and they they spawn additional animals um, on their turns. Try to take out their animals as quickly as possible because you will get overwhelmed quickly. All right, uh, trackers having their own faction, new units and armor design, all really cool. Uh, animal groups are stronger than before. So what they mean by this, uh, most animal groups now have some extra leaders in them. So you'll kind of be able to capture like an alpha wolf or a, I think it's called a dominant sow uh, as, you know, the head of the boars kind of thing. And so instead of just capturing like base level boars, you can actually capture these alpha units as well, which is really cool. Um, so... Their final comment, with the exception of pack leaders and phantom swarms, you can tame every type of animal. So now, I think from memory, that means you can capture mole rats, plagued rats, boars, sows, wolves, alpha wolves, uh, croc swines, bears, mosquitoes, and that may be it, which is a total of nine animal companions, nine distinct animal companions. Um, all animals have their own skill trees as well, which is really cool. I can't believe they haven't listed that here. Maybe it's, maybe it's down below. Um, but the animal skill trees are quite fun. And, uh, yeah, as I said, there's a few ideas I have about, uh, about things to be doing with animal companions. Uh, your group. Okay. So level cap increase and specializations at level eight. So this is really, really cool. Um, I'll, I've looked through a bunch of the specializations, obviously haven't uh, checked too many of the upgrades for those specializations as well yet, but I do assume they can be upgraded and that will again obviously make all of them stronger. Uh, some really fun ones do include things like Rage on the Archer. So Rage is a new um, buff that your troops can get and that gives you a bonus to your damage and archers can just stack this up continuously for every shot they make over a certain range so that's going to be fun uh animals you tame now have skill trees oh there we go yep so you can uh you can actually get your ponies to fight alongside you and there's armor for the ponies as well also really cool uh food consumptions for animals have been updated cool and you can customize appearance by buying a barber's kit i need to try that out see what sort of cool hairdos we can organize um New regions, new recipes, new equipment. I haven't checked all the different um, possible recipes yet, obviously. So keen to see what some of those are. And new camping gear is always fun. I do love camping gear. Um, just building out that campsite is, is always so good. Uh, profession and activities. Okay, so we've got uh, a new profession at least listed here. So the bard is a new prof profession allows you to play and learn songs in taverns. Um, so you, I don't know, loaded up my group, didn't have them access to them straight away. So there's going to be an item around the place uh, to to grab and craft and then um, obviously add the bard to your squad. Uh, you can now find log wooden logs to be cut by your axeman. This is a really nice change because wood was actually one of the resources that was the scarcest to come by. So I feel like this means a an axeman or I guess a warrior is going to be a mandatory addition to the party. And this last one is amazing. Okay, so previously when you had a profession and you got it up to the highest level, if you changed from that profession to something else, your companion forgot everything they knew about that profession. Now, uh, instead, once you've actually uh, got that profession to that level, you can change to another and switch back and you will maintain that highest level. It's awesome. Uh, it means that you're, you can run with a smaller group and your characters can specialize in multiple professions and you can even tailor your party slightly based on the fight that you're going to take as well. So really, really cool. Massive fan of a one-line change and it's that exciting for me anyway. Maybe not for everyone. Uh, I think it's because I run with smaller parties generally. Okay, combat. Um, new survival mode has been added where you have to hold out for a certain number of rounds. Nice addition, nice addition. I think uh, having some more variety in the battles as opposed to just kill everything is, is actually really good. It does mean different party compositions will shine in different battles. So you can see this is nothing but a, a plus. Escape battle mode. Reach a specific area to flee a fight while being chased by swathes. This is obviously against the horde that you're seeing in the video here. Um, yeah, again, awesome. Having some different ways to fight battles was really, really cool. All right, new environmental effects in the course of battle, lightning and rockfalls. Uh, so I 
let me see if I can just switch to a screenshot one second. Okay, so this was a shot that I had in camp and I really like just the new regions kind of colors. It, just really nice, muted, beautiful, love it. The environmental effects lightning got into a couple of fights and this is the sort of stuff that I absolutely loved seeing. Three enemies in the middle of this lightning strike. Similar, three more enemies in the middle of this lightning strike. Playing around these is really cool. Lightning and rocks will uh, kill an enemy outright uh, unless they have a supported buff. So I think um, this guy won't survive because his archer is a bit far away. But really really fun to to use and you know just make sure your own guys aren't in there because they will get killed um which you do not want to happen all right balancing uh they've nerfed first aid a little bit um i think this is a good thing it means that fights against things like rats and alexa um are a little bit harder like they're meant to be uh without kind of completely without making them impossible so still heals only removes a few debuffs. Um, I think it's a good thing. I think it's a good thing. Repair kits being updated, so there's more ways to um, upgrade how much armor they repair. So if you visit a blacksmith in town, they'll sell the recipe to upgrade how much repair kits do. Definitely worthwhile. Cool little change, and it'll save me thousands of dollars in repairs. So I'm happy about that. Uh, fish's meat, great. Uh, a few little things. Look, maximum carrying capacity being reduced is probably sensible, given that um, as characters level up to level 9, they would just be able to carry so much you don't even need ponies, which doesn't make too much sense. Units not being part of the battle gaining XP is really cool, because it means ponies outside of battle will also gain experience, level up, carry more for you. Fantastic. Uh, a few other little ones there. Uh, Caravan's now selling Alizar powder. I think it's Alizarian powder in the game, but this is good. It means you can craft more explosive things. Uh, knowledge requirements being updated. So I think they've hidden a couple. So things like burning mastery, poison mastery now need to be unlocked. Um, I'm not sure what unlocks them though. So there's a few things to, to check out there. Might be a couple of bugs. Mm, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, champions. Alexa has been made stronger. Okay, maybe people were taking her down too easily. Uh, but her weapon has been made a little bit weaker. Okay, so maybe they buffed her health and stuff because they made the weapon uh, a little bit weaker. Uh, can't infinitely stack bloodshed status. That does mean that um, the weapon splitter is no longer a champion killer. It used to be that you could just, you know, chip away every round and they'd get a higher and higher bleed status on them. So probably, probably sensible. All right, classes. Uh, willpower of animals globally reduced, creeper damage reduced, health reduced, but their number in combat has been increased. Okay, so creepers are no longer meant to be these kind of like hide in the shadows, come out and one-shot you, uh, but they will still come out and be scary, just more of them. I think that's a good change. I didn't like my light characters just getting one-shot all the time uh, if they were getting hit from a, a creeper coming out of the shadows. I think that's a positive change. Uh, I reckon they can take maybe two hits now, some of them. Uh, High-level creepers deal a lot of damage. All right, daggers. Uh, knife throw range being reduced. I think that's a good thing. I thought it was a bit ridiculous that rangers could throw knives as far as an archer could shoot a bow. Uh, poison weapon applies two poison. Great. And the hoodlum dagger is a little bit stronger than it was before. Also a good change. I think it makes that dagger much more viable. Archers. Archers have received some love. Now, I thought archers were already performing pretty well, but obviously they, they uh, were a little unloved by the player base. So we have a 30% increase on recoil shot, definitely increasing the viability of that single target uh, kind of killer. Uh, barrages range. All ranges look like they've been upgraded to 9 meters. I think that's a good change. Uh, as I said, I think the, the dagger throw being as long as the bow was odd, Increasing that range even further is is a good thing. Um, obviously, you still can't hit your own party members, so you got to get that uh, get that angle right. Uh, critical damage increase. Poacher's bow has increased. That's again really good because the vicious shot bow was pretty unusable with the, the low dexterity bonus that it had. And volley of arrows does a tiny bit more at the upper end, not at the lower. All right, cool.
cool. Archers, definitely, definitely getting some love. All right, Swordsman, uh, counterattack, fix the duration of inspiration, slash deals less, so Swordsman have received a small nerf, um, but Interception deals more, so that Charging Sword that I never used because it was way too low damage may now get pulled out of the bag. Uh, their buffs have received a buff, and Destabilizing Strike, 90 to 110. Hmm. Interesting. This was actually already a really good talent, so buffing that further is is good, even though it's only 10%, I guess. Probably not too noticeable. I already like that talent, though, just because of the um, removal of armor. Fantastic. All right, Axemen. Uh, Sentinel stats have been updated. I think there was a problem with their strength being too low. Uh, cutting Maelstrom. It has been nerfed a little bit, so 15%. So I think Warriors must have been outperforming. You were usually hitting like three or four guys with Maelstrom, uh, so you're still going to be dealing quite a significant amount of damage, you know, uh, 105 to 140% kind of thing. So overall, still probably very, very strong, um, just not as useful on two targets. With a two-target uh, two target scenario, you probably want the... Uh, Rampage talent instead of Maelstrom now. A uh, little bit of a nerf to Recklessness. Uh, 150 to 100, 200 to 150. Yeah, that'll be okay. I think Warriors were overperforming and you were probably doing a lot of overkill damage anyway. So now you'll probably just be killing things instead of overkilling them. And Fanaticism takes 10% of max health to gain Fury. Hmm... I think that's okay. As people level up more, they've got more armor, so you're less likely to get into your health. So I think that'll still still be viable. All right. Uh, brutes or mace users have increased the relentless charge damage. Oh, that's also really cool. I actually quite liked relentless charge for repositioning a war, uh, brute. Um, works quite well with things like Lucilla's hammer to just make sure you're positioning yourself in a really good spot, as well as giving yourself a Fury buff once the talent's upgraded. So, highly recommended. Uh, Armor Breaker, also got a buff. I also really like this already um, because of how I use my Brutes. So, they've just made my Brutes even stronger. All right, Pole Arms. Spear Throws Range Talent is now 8 meters. Great. Again, I don't think you should be able to throw a Spear further than you can shoot a bow. Good change. Uh, they've buffed the Fervent Support talent mm, up to 70% when uh, upgraded. That is quite strong. I feel like your Spearman will be able to deal a fair bit of extra damage with that. I'm a fan. My Archer Spearman party is going to be very happy about some of these changes. And Rallying Shout being reduced to one cost. I think that's a good change. I, I don't think I used this talent once. So now that it's one Valor Point, I might consider it. All right, a few little bug fixes. Uh, they've fixed the capturing bug. Okay, so in up until now in release, you have had a 100% chance to capture, regardless of how much health an enemy has. Um, in the demo, maybe it was back in the demo, uh, you actually only had a 100% chance when the health was really low. So you're going to have to play around with capturing a little bit more now and not just um, assume that it's going to work all the time. So that's actually, I, I like that change. I don't think the capture change should be 100%. Um, and there's a few items that can buff your capture chance as well, which again makes these items a bit more viable in the game rather than just being kind of there but not required. Uh, occupied points of interest, clear a U UE display when fighting an animal group without a leader, fixed problems. Uh, da, 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 da. I don't think there's anything too big that I want to call out. New place icons is nice, makes the map look a little bit nicer. Oh, this is okay. This is a good one. Major performance and memory leak fixes. So a number of people were worried about the stutters and the slowdowns that were happening, particularly if you played for a longer session. Fixing these is great. Uh, strength, increasing critical damage. Oh, I actually hadn't even noticed that was bugged. There you go. Well, my strength characters seem to be hitting pretty hard. Anyway, great. Uh, and many other little things have been fixed and changed. There is a beautiful little trailer uh, available on, uh, on YouTube as well. I'm going to put a link to this in the 
comments down below or description down below. Uh, and the final one, they're still working on Chinese localization, which is nice. I think it's it's cool that they're localizing it even in early access. Anyway, that is a, a little bit of an overview of Harag. Now, the changes that they've put in, um, obviously it is a new region, but things like the level 9 level cap, the addition of all the extra animals you contain, the addition of class skills, the addition of um, uh, faction passives. So where was it in the enemies section, I think? Uh, so faction passives and new uh, faction units do mean that the existing regions that you're playing will change a bit as well, particularly if you go to them later. Uh, and then obviously region locked mode versus free exploration where enemies scale with you. It also means you've got kind of two new pathways there as well so i'm really curious how difficult harag is when you're playing region locked mode um i think i've got one party in region locked mode that i'll, I'll keep trying to level up and see how they go um but it's uh i, I think you're probably going to face a fair few challenges in harag if you try to hit region locked mode too early so uh it'll take a little bit of getting the party ready there as well um, one thing I did ask the devs just to clarify is whether Harag is a region you can start in. And they have said that no, Harag is not a region you can start in. So it's not going to become one of the starting regions available when you create a new party. And honestly, I think it makes sense. Uh, the challenges that are here, and so in particular, these um, pigs that you fight, the Crocs one, they are freaking deadly. Um, when you kill them, they let out a little swarm of mosquitoes and at really low levels, all of these little things add up and just make it so that your party has a lot of trouble. I actually think if you encountered a party of bears at level one, you would not be able to kill them. I think that the way that the bears function in the game, you run into bears they destroy your party at level one. There's no way around it. So I think not starting in uh, in Harag is actually a, a clever move by the devs. Anyway, uh, that's me kind of wrapping up. Um, the, the reason that the recommendation at the start was basically the game is now in a, a state where I would definitely recommend a buy as opposed to a wait and see is that the amount of content there now is really, really solid. You're probably looking at a minimum of 35 to 40 hours for a playthrough now um and that's going pretty quickly through things that's not necessarily 100 percenting every region every tomb you know seeing seeing all the stuff that's in the game um 40 hours will probably see you at level nine if you're fairly efficient with your battles that's that's kind of my my ballpark figure or ballpark estimate um the reason that I'm recommending a, a buy at this point in time is that if you played the game now, gave it a solid chunk of time, then you put it on the shelf for another six months and you wait for the final release, you will actually, again, see a huge quality of life um, jump in changes, you know, more regions, that kind of thing. But you will have also had a nice break between the content drops. Um, after the next major content drop, uh, which is going to be, again, super excited about, but I'll, I'll focus this video just on Harag. Um, it will then be closer to release and you won't, you know, manage to have that big break and you'll probably be like, oh, you know, not as much has changed. I might not pick it up again. Uh, so that's kind of where I'm heading with that recommendation. Um, obviously, a lot, of, a lot of people already own and play. Um, so I'm hoping the new update causes a few extra, extra streams. I might even stream a bit of gameplay myself. Uh, we will see how we go. Thank you very much for listening. That is CAG over and out. Have a great day and enjoy the update when you get a chance to check it out.